Comments on items not on the agenda. Chair Crane, I want to note that Cal, or Chair Clapton, I want to note that Council Member Weiger was raising her hand. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. Does Councilmember Feiger, can you hear us? I can. I was just raising my hand to be promoted to panelist, but if that's not an option, I'm fine. I I, I don't know about remote participation for a council liaison um, off the top of my head, um, but if you I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, Anthony. Moving on, then, um, the consent calendar. Um, do we have a, any comments on the minutes of the last regular meeting, March 7th? No comments? No. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Second it? No. If I can second. Chair Fawcett? Uh, aye. Yes. Vice Chair Bedard? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Motion passes. I'm moving on. Received final reports from ad hoc subcommittee for targeted outreach and disband ad hoc subcommittee for targeted outreach if necessary. Um, is there a report on the item? Yes, I guess I'm giving it. Um, when I can turn the page. <laughs> yes, I do have that one. Oh, and then okay. um, I did print it out too many times. Um, oh, that might be the old one. That one. Okay. Um, the project was the ad hoc subcommittee was myself and Commissioner Morris with um, Librarian Rose to uh, the goal to explore targeted outreach to seniors, youth, and the general public working on the road. Um, goal to increase library awareness through events, visits, tours, library tours at the um, Primary goal um, rose up just to help identify events, organizations, locations, 
in um, um, Los Altos and Los Altos Hills, uh, where they could take the GoGo Biblio truck and have it equipped with the ability to check out books, create new library cards, and have crafts and giveaways, promotions for the kids, um, activities for them, games for kids. Um, so um, basically, uh, we went through all the schools, Los Altos, Los Altos Hills, and some in Palo Alto that draw from the hills, um, and um, identified contact info, names where possible. Um, to senior centers, um, preschools, uh, summer school, seasonal events, uh, like the Los Altos Hills Town Picnic. Um, Rose did ask us not to make direct contact. There was some misunderstanding there. I did make some initial contact, but um, most didn't respond anyway. Um, mainly um, the goal was for Rose have to have her staff follow up as and when time allowed, when it was suited their schedule. Um, and um, so we came up with um, attached the end of the document is a list of um, various places that we listed. Um, I know there have been some, con well, there were some contacts before the GoGo -Go Biblio came out of the shop, right? <laughs> um, but um, did I forget anything, uh, Commissioner Morris? No. Okay. Um, any uh, questions? Uh, any uh, public comment? <laughs> I really want to thank the both of you for, for very much for doing this. I know it took a lot of time and um, effort, and this list is really helpful. It'll help us for many years going forward to, you know, utilize the, the GoGo Biblio and also without the GoGo Biblio. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, your connections to the community um, are, you know, very important mm -hmm. and, and help us reach people that maybe we haven't reached before. Thank you. And I, I wanted to add that like one of the contacts I gave you um, actually thanked me oh, saying okay. like, I we're so happy that Los Altos Library is coming because oh, they said that you guys were coming in the summer program. So they were really appreciative that I connected to you. Good. So, yeah. so you we're, we're, I feel like it's a win-win situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, public comment? Yes, just on behalf of Lolly, I want to thank you for that. Uh, uh, that Lolly provided the, the library with the GoGo -Go Biblio, and we really love seeing that you're finding new places to use it. So thank you on behalf of Lolly. I checked out a book from the GoGo Biblio on Tuesday. Is there any, any discussion? Great list. Um, Conclusion, I think, um, so we know I think that the final report's been received. If you'd like to, you could disband the ad hoc subcommittee if you mm -hmm. feel the work has been done uh, for the ad hoc subcommittee, which would be a motion of someone on the commission, and then we take a vote to disband the ad hoc subcommittee. Okay, well, if Rose is okay with that, then, um, okay, we... And move to stay on the ad hoc committee. Okay, if I second when I'm on the committee? Okay, I second. We just ran the ad hoc subcommittee. Uh, Chair Fawcett? Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Bernard? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Carter? Yes. Motion carries. Right, then. Moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, Next item on the agenda is um, review sensory headset pilot project proposal. Um, is there, I believe there is a report for this item? Yes, correct. Thank you, Goldstein. I think it's the next one down. Yeah, I'll have it. Yes. 
and myself and Rose worked on this together. And um, I, uh, we were calling it uh, sensory headset um, instead of noise cancellation or noise reducing headphones. Just and um, I just wanted to show you the samples here, um, and I'll pass it along later. But th this is what I mean by sensory headphones. You can see. And um, we wanted to um, pilot this at the beginning just because we wanted to see how, like operationally, how it works and whether like we need to fine tune the operations, like whether we want to add fidgets, you know, we talked about fidgets, but at the beginning we want to just do the headphones and see like if we can add more or if we need to tweak the operations be um, and how it's working, you know, are they getting lost? We just wanted to see at the beginning um, so I put the time frame of the pilot at six months to revisit, like how we want to change. For each. Sorry? Is the cost that you have here for each? I uh, no, no, this is like total. Okay. So yes, total cost. Um, they're actually quite inexpensive, actually. They are like, you know, some of them are $10. Uh, they are expensive ones, but I chose kind of the cheap ones and they actually work pretty fine. My, my daughter uses it all the time. And so this, the top one is um, like this one. And um, it has actually a, um, a bag that comes with it. So it's actually great. It might be good for library actually purposes because you can put put the cover in. You don't have to buy extra cover because it comes with it and it's only $10 uh, on Amazon. <laughs> um, and then this one is the second one, um, the second one. So I have this one too. And it all has, all has um, padding inside too. Um, my daughter removed some of them, so some of them don't have it, but it came with the pets for everything. Um, so, and then this one, and then I think there's another one that's down. So I think this this one might be different, but basically it's similar, but like I have these. So there's a lot, many different brands, um, but there is a lot of $10 range, $15 range, and there's like a $30 range as well. But I was talking to Rose, and maybe we can go with um, the cheaper range with this bag because we thought that this might be operationally more um, easier for the library. Um, and then we talked about putting like stickers or some kind of mark on it so that it says that it's library. So if somebody takes it away, they know that it, it belongs to the library. Um, and um, operationally, if you, go, if, you, if you can go up a little bit. So we talked about, um, focusing on children because we think that children's room is very, um, the noisiest, it gets the noisiest, right? Like, I mean, adult section, it's more quiet. So we thought, you know, we focus on the loudest area and there's a lot of, I mean, there are kids that have, you know, obviously sens sensory sensitivity with noise, but also, you know, typical kids that even when it gets really loud, somebody's crying or something, you know, this might help them. Um, and then we said to purchase like six sets of headsets and we're going to focus on the kids section. So it's going to be in the kid counter area and, um, people who visit the library can request them. Um, and then upon request, the library will hand it out. And there's no, we, we talked about not having like a check-in check-out thing. Um, so it's going to be on our system at the beginning and we will see how it works. And, um, and then we'll make sure that we have, um, some, some kind of signage so that it's clear that they can actually borrow the headset so that they know, because we need to make sure that people are aware of this um, pilot. So we will we'll have like signages. We talked about putting it in the maybe potentially newsletter or something like that, right? Yes. And if you want to add anything. Yeah, I do. Yeah, thank you, Michelle, for, um, you know, she did the majority of the work on this and we met and um, I think it would be a good fit for us to make the library more welcoming, you know, that's part of our strategic plan and to um, make sure that, you know, parents of children who have a sensory issue do feel welcome at the library and feel like that they can enjoy the library um, just like any other child mm -hmm. or other family um, based on experiences mm -hmm. that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a relatively low budget item that I think we could, um, we have a, the budget from the friends for programs and supplies and it would fit within our budget and our, um, you know, the scope for our library needs. So um, thank you for, what, thank you for suggesting this. Yeah, thank you. And I think it's a great way to show the inclusivity in the library. So I think it's a great step for us to take this pilot. 
any questions? <laughs> yeah, are there any clarifying questions or questions at all? Okay. No, um, public comment. Okay. Um, at some point, you had, I think, expressed some concerns about sterilizing them in between uses. Is yeah. that still an, an issue of any kind? What we can do, what we what we currently do with sterilizing, um, if we have shared, we have headphones in the children's room for the uh, the AWE computer, we use rubbing alcohol, and we have the supplies to do that. Okay, great. Thanks. And we did put the disinfected up the use in the operation. So that there's that operational suggestions that we put together. Um, it's very simple, but I think you know it's outlined. Are there any questions, commissioners? I was just gonna say this is a bigger deal than you think. And we should do a video, a small, like this is a big deal. He means it's potentially a big deal. It's no, it is a big deal. I think countywide, I would think the noise and people who are sensitive. Definitely, a good job. Like Thank you. I'm happy to coming from you know special needs mom. <laughs> and you shared, has, yeah. you shared with me that you've been to museum like where yes. they offer yes. this type mm -hmm. of the report mm -hmm. work well. Yes. Um, I know we serve more people at the library, so this is why we're piloting it to see what what would work and what wouldn't work. If I've seen it in zoos, I've seen it in museums, um, especially when they see my kid, um, they like say, "Oh, we have this. Like, do you want headphones? Do you want, you know?" Especially when she was going like this or something like that. Sometimes, I mean, we usually take them with me, but sometimes we forget. So it's it's great to have that supply. Any further comments, discussion? So we um I think you could uh, okay. if you'd like to provide direction um for the library to explore this as a pilot project for a term of six months utilizing county budget and then it would come back to actually the friends would pay for it. <laughs> so we should direct Rose to get the funds for the friends or pass Rose direct. <laughs> and then it would come back. Um, you suggested six months. Is that mm -hmm. that's what you're thinking? Yes, I was thinking that. Or we can revisit earlier. Like both of us can three revisit. Months. Yeah, three months. We can do three months, six months. But I think six months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from staff perspective seems like the earliest. I would say you could make a tangible understanding of whether it's working. Yeah, I think so too. And we can. I mean, we can always tweak. You know, with discussions, and maybe we revisit all together in six months. Well, so it goes. So the conclusion is to provide direction to staff for a five or six months. Provide direction to the county library staff to purchase headsets um, for a pilot term of six months that will return to the commission. Mm -hmm. You don't need to vote on that direction, it's not a motion. Right? Correct. And it sounds like there is. Everyone's in agreement. Yes. Okay, great. Um, moving on. Um, my agenda is all coming up. Yeah. Um, ah, yes. Next item is the uh, discuss, discussion of the proposed night at the library. Oh, no, no. We, well, what you have here is the um, library improvements ad hoc subcommittee is what's on this list. Um, are you looking at the previous meeting? Yeah, I think I'm looking at that. my identity mixed up. Um, uh, four is um, receive update from potential library improvements ad hoc subcommittee. Is it? Oops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm happy to provide. Enough I can. I mean, we gave input. And I was hoping that we'd move a little faster to get it done, yeah. but please, I'd like to hear what's going on. Yeah, so. Yeah. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we received, uh, we, the sub, Julie's not here, so I'll give the report. Yeah. And Julie and I met with city staff and looked at the report, at least the first instantiation, and gave basic review. There were no big surprises. It essentially followed the presentation very closely. Good. 
but it still needs to make its way through the system. The city and Anthony will give the report, but the city has to hire um, the, you know, put it out for RFP, yeah. but get all the stakeholders to agree mm -hmm. that, in fact, this is what we're going to let out for RFP. And city staff is working on the um, RFP documents and has been working with the ad hoc subcommittee. Um, really, they did the, the majority of the late work, which is really helping us to um, make it easier. And city staff has connected with the county staff just to make sure we're on the same page. And then uh, city staff plans to meet with uh, the ad hoc subcommittee and uh, I would recommend that we continue this ad hoc subcommittee moving forward to continue utilizing louder to, <laughs> to continue utilizing this ad hoc subcommittee moving forward um, because we do want to lean on their expertise through this process. And um, I do hope that we will be able to meet in the next couple of weeks to further discuss those next steps. And uh, city staff will let you know in, uh, in staff report updates that their the budget process has begun um, from the city perspective and this item is being incorporated into the city budget. So we are forward thinking that this is um, a priority for the city council and for the city for moving forward and we're looking forward to putting out this RFP as soon as possible. Can I ask a question? Yes. Did you get support from the county? <laughs> As, as, as far as I know, uh, it was a productive meeting, um, and they did provide good insight on uh, similar projects that have been done within the county of uh, similar nature, uh, which uh, our ad hoc subcommittee uh, intelligently used some of those documents and used some of that information. So a lot of it looked very familiar. So they were uh, actually, I think, very impressed to see what had been done. Okay. We're excited to move forward together. Any other comments, public comments? Um, any comments from the commissioners? Um, uh, well, do we need a motion there or is just the conclusion is to continue as it's you just stated? Activity. Okay, so we continue with the ad hoc subcommittee. Um, so moving on to the next item, uh, which is a discussion of the night at the library event. Mm -hmm. Establish our subcommittee if necessary. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I met with uh, Elizabeth Ward because we were talking about doing this in conjunction or in collaboration with the History Museum. Mm -hmm. They are very good at putting on lovely events, and they also have a lovely patio, which of course belongs to the city. And Jennifer, um, Jennifer, looking at you, <laughs> Elizabeth said, she got very excited. And she said uh, that Vicki Reader, who was well, stage yes, company president, had, the, uh, had earlier, I don't know exactly what earlier means, come up with the idea of what she called a night of ideas, mm -hmm. not a night at the library or the which would involve the History Museum, the library, and Los Altos stage. Okay. And Elizabeth then contacted Vicki Reeder to tell her that the Library Commission had floated this idea of, you know, what I just said. At this point, Elizabeth resigned from, from you know, she's moving to Southern California. Now, my, uh, Christine said, you know, I've talked to Christine about this. I have never put together a big event. I think it needs a professional event planner to do an event of this scale. Christine said she had never done a big event either. I mean, to me, Thanksgiving dinner is a big event, you know, I mean, it's a lot of work. <laughs> So uh, this uh, woman, Vicki Reader, whom I don't know, uh, but I know who she is, and you probably know her, yeah, uh, would be, uh, so she's someone who has 
concrete ideas, if that meant, if that's a, an oxymoron enough for you. But anyway, uh, that's uh, my opening statement here. And I had planned to go back to Elizabeth before this meeting, but she resigned. So I don't know what their plans are. I belong to the History Museum, but I'm not active. You know, I'm not involved in anything serious with it. And so I don't know what their plans are, whether they have a person ready to step in. That I don't um, know. It would be so easy to find I'll, out. I'll provide an update. They do have an interim executive director. They have an interim executive director. Um, I haven't met the individual yet. They do they, have an interim director. Who is it? Um, I don't. The, not public yet. I, I don't know that it's public yet. Um, I believe that. Uh, I think. Um, Le, I'll, I know that the best contact is Larry Lang mm -hmm. at the History Museum. He's the president of the board. He would be the best person to talk well, to. Uh, you know, I mean, this is for the Library Commission to kick around and uh, make some recommendations. Um, I cannot do this. First of all, I have a big hearing problem. And I'd be happy to be a support person. But I, I've never done an event. Christine has never done an event. and we, But we agree that it should be a professional event planner to have a... Oh, and it should be a, maybe a fundraiser, right? No, well, this is the first time I've heard these details. The problem seems to me that the scale of the event has grown from being well, something what I, library to being well, something much mm -hmm. bigger. Well, Christine, that's what came up when I met with Elizabeth. I was going to say, so it sounds like if we try to scale back and do something just with the library, would that be putting everyone else's nose out of joint? I got uh, that in Can I make a recommendation? Yes. Uh, 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 Vice Chair Bedard, if you want to go first. Or no, I just want to move that we create a subcommittee for this event with you and Julie to take care of these and other problems. <laughs> Julie is okay. already on a committee with you for the RLP. Yes, but it's my, I mean, I don't see why Julie should not be, if she wants to pursue this, should not be allowed to do the subcommittee Brown Act notwithstanding. So when I when I spoke to Commissioner Crane, who's not here, so unfortunately she can't prove it. Sure. She was comfortable with someone else doing it oh. because she's already on and okay. she she's on the library improvements RFP ad hoc subcommittee. All right. So I am... recommendation would maybe be for an initial event, and this is the first time that you're pursuing this, um, potentially doing it on a smaller scale. So you're not thinking of it as, as a, you know, because uh, I think it does sound like a wonderful idea to do kind of a gala event. And um, I was thinking a night at, uh, as you were talking, it sounded like a night at the Civic Center where it's really the night of ideas is using everything. So based on my conversation with Elizabeth Ward, I think that Vicki Reader would not be happy to be out of the loop. Uh, Elizabeth was pretty explicit about that. This is a woman who had come up with a plan, an idea, and I don't know exactly when it started or why it didn't come to fruition. But I, you know, at this point, I don't know what. To and do. I think that what what I'm envisioning or what this was initially envisioned as for an event at the library at night. Um, I don't think knowing, I know Vic, Vicki Reader as well. I don't think she would be upset if we had an okay. event at night in the library. Okay. That's a smaller event. If we started to talk about involving the whole civic center, then maybe she would want to get involved, but really a night at the library event. I think if you wanted to create an ad hoc subcommittee of, two of the remaining three commissioners and uh, partner with the county to meet and discuss what it could look like and pursue the smaller scale event of just an event at the library, I think would be beneficial. What would you think of it being in the library or using the patio? Patio is good. The patio is very nice. So which patio? The patio between the library and the history museum. It's off the history museum, but it belongs to the city. I think it would be challenging logistically to, I'm imagining 
Um, I have a three-year-old at home, so I'm imagining that this event would be for families and um, potentially people of all ages. And so you'd want to keep it in a confined space and there's a potential, I, I can't speak for Rose and what the county would feel comfortable with, but maybe smaller scale event really focused in the library building interior. Um, and then if it's very successful and it starts to become more of an idea, maybe in the future, it looks to expand to more venues and more locations and more activities across other. Uh, so you don't areas. like the idea of uh, incorporating this with the history museum. You want to keep it just the library. I think it would probably make it easier based on what I'm hearing is the concern, which is if it becomes too large of an event, then it becomes difficult to manage. And so that way it would be. And the goal for the library commission was, I thought, to more visibility for the commission, was it not? Correct. Which kind of perhaps gets lost in the big event that we. And I, I do think I see. I mean, we have five very capable capable commissioners that could, I think could plan a successful event with library staff at this scale. I think when you start to talk about a bigger one, then maybe we would need an event planner for something that's more logistically challenging. But this that we're I think was the initial idea is not too difficult for our commission. I do not want to be in charge of this event. Okay, I'll be very happy to be part of the workforce. And it's up to the discretion of the commission whether you'd like to even pursue the event or if you want to. There's two other commissioners that aren't on an ad hoc subcommittee if they would like to take it on okay. on your behest. That's at the discretion of the commission. What is the timing that you were thinking about for this? What? what was the time timing that you were thinking for this event? Like summer, it winter, summer. No. summer. Yeah, yeah, that soon. Um, Rose, is this something you can give us guidelines on? You feel? I'd be happy to work with the, whoever, what commission, whoever commissioners are interested. Um, summer might be too soon, um, as we already have most of our summer oh. stuff planned, and that yeah, that can be decided. Um, that could be decided if there are commissioners in, interested. So I think I would be happy to meet with whoever is interested to discuss, you know, the scope and next steps. Okay. So we should maybe schedule a Zoom or something. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you guys would need to form an ad hoc subcommittee yeah. here. Uh, I mean, it's okay if one individual wants to take the lead, but I think your best plan would be identify two commissioners out of the three commissioners remaining to be on the ad hoc subcommittee, which it sounds like Commissioner Carter may not be excited to be the lead of, but she'll be on the committee, but I just don't want to be in charge. So then we would need another commissioner who's willing to help take the lead with that. Uh, I, I will. Shut yeah, up. yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't guarantee this event will come to fruition, but I'll see what I can do <laughs> with Rose's um, capable uh, guiding guidance. Hopefully we can make something happen. So, any more comments? Um, so, uh, conclusion. So Direction to, provided to staff to form an ad hoc subcommittee, or do we need a motion? You need to make the motion that you'd like to form an ad hoc subcommittee to plan a night at the library event. Okay, I'd like to propose a motion that the commission will form an ad hoc subcommittee to plan a night at the library event with the help of county staff. Great. And who and the committee, the committee consisting of myself and Commissioner Crane. Great. Oh no, oh, you're not on it at all? I said I would be on it with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. And also Julie. And myself. Well, I, I thought three. we weren't allowed to be on two subcommittees. It just be the two of you. Yeah, we're only allowed to. Okay. Just us? Yeah. That is, those are four very capable hands. <laughs> and Rose. Good. Okay. Chair Fawcett? Yes. Vice Chair Bedard? Yes. Milton Morris? Commissioner Carter? Yes. The motion carries. Moving on. Uh, Informational items only. Uh, 
Are there any informational items? The commission? No. Um, all of your in all of your report outs from commissioners will be after staff reports. Okay. So staff reports will happen and then we'll do allow you time to each report out. Can you remind me so we can only have two subcommittees at a time, right? Correct. Okay. So right now, after this meeting, you'll be a full ad hoc subcommittee. Um, but that doesn't mean the work stops just because of yeah. ad hoc subcommittee. Mm -hmm. As I think tonight's a great example of uh, individual work that a commissioner could do on a specific mm -hmm. topic and bring forward and um, still. So if individual commissioners have an interesting topic they would like to pursue, staff, city staff and county staff are always happy to. Oh. And I could keep discussing with Rose about the headphone project, right? Like it updates and things like that. I can't, I don't have to. Individual commissioners can always interact yeah. individually okay. with myself or mm -hmm. Kevin staff. Okay. Assuming they're willing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be her input. <laughs> All right, I'll share uh, my screen for the county. Okay, sure. And um, I'm just going to highlight it so you all can go to. Um, Rosa slides okay. after I know that's more helpful. So nice to see you all. Um, so May is Asian American and Pacific Island Islander Heritage Month, and I was um, able to help open a very interesting art exhibit at Saratoga Library um, this week as well. And one of the seniors from Saratoga High School actually worked with over a hundred students with this theme and now have an art exhibit of student creations, everything from painting to photography to drawings um, on exhibit at the Saratoga Library in celebration for this month. So um, there is the, the interesting fact that over half of our county residents identify as AAPI or Hawaiian descent. So it's always lovely, yes, half. So it's always interesting to have um, really these tablets showcased so if you're in Saratoga, please stop by and see that art. Additionally, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And one of the, um, you know, we're hearing so much about the need of this for so many, um, ourselves, our communities, our families. And I wanted to just point to you all to, again, some of our online resources. And Plain Tree Health Library is one on our health digital resource page. And it really has some phenomenal information. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, you've all heard the story of, you know, asking librarian, um, you know, Google will give you 10,000 answers and the librarian will give you the right one. And so I always encourage folks to use the library website because it does curate this information so that if you are interested on knee replacement, right, Friday and I were talking about things, um, there's a lot of really wonderful factual information um, on our website. And particularly, I was doing a little research in Plain Tree, and what jumped out at me is how many wonderful programs Los Altos Library does around art. And that really, what they've shown is that art and creative expression benefits you, right, both mentally and physically. Um, so the more time, they say, the more time you spend analyzing a piece of art, the more you're able to stimulate both unconscious and conscious brain functions. So doing so can increase your analytics and problem solving skills in everyday life. So again, just a fact from Plain Tree, and I wanted to also point out, they also have caregiver resources. So how to communicate with health professionals, a jargon dictionary, you know, um, what patient rights are, you know, kind of important in these things. So it's very um, deep diving into those is exciting. Lastly, every year, Library Journal, which is kind of our library lands, um, trade journal, I would say, awards a number of mover and shaker awards. And these are librarians from all over the country in different um, roles, public libraries, school libraries. And this year, two of our staff out of 50, so 50 were awarded. Two of our staff were awarded this mover and shaker award. One is Claire Mauricio, who's our library services manager um, for all of her work she's been doing with the county, the Narcan programs, and other mental health wellness and, um, uh, information sessions, and then also our librarian, Elizabeth Munoz Rosas, who is 
down in Children's Services in Gilroy, and if any of you had an opportunity last fall to visit the Dolores Huerta exhibit that was at Gilroy, and we actually had Dolores come, where we had over 600 people come to visit. Elizabeth herself um, grew up here in California, and her father was a migrant worker, so it was very close to her. So it's always exciting to hear about the different work that's happening throughout the county, and I just wanted to give you that update. Pass it over to Rose, but I'm always happy to take any questions. All right. Thank you, Anthony. So, um, I'll start off, um, as I mentioned, summer reading um, kicks off June 1st. So, we do have our programs planned, and I do want to shout out to the friends who support all of our programs for summer reading every year um, and also purchase the prizes for the kids. So we're really grateful for the friends. This is um, one of one flyer for our programs. Um, and this is for um, our other, other set of programs for adult and teen. Um, these programs are also online and we have a special uh, page and you'll see a link on our web on that flyer that takes you directly to our summer reading information. So summer reading is for all ages, so everyone can can participate. And um, we hope that you sign up. Um, I think we'll get a free book bag if you do. So nice one. <laughs> um, then we had uh, the bookmobile last week came to the library. Uh, you'll see this is the picture there parked right out uh, where the GGD is. Um, it was uh, aligned with one of our story times. So the families got to visit the bookmobile, do a craft, and have get some free little giveaways. So that's always a fun event because I think kids love to see mm -hmm. a big big bus that, or big, you know, that's a library and they get to check out from it if they like. Um, Next, uh, this has been seen like a while ago, but since we haven't met, we had Council Member Meadows at our story time. And she did a wonderful job. She's done this, this is her second time, and she's always happy to come back. Mm -hmm. And I want to shout out on the right is Catherine, our children's librarian, who um, was the one who worked with Sally and um, <clears throat> made the story time very successful. So it was a joy. A lot of, you know, I think the families love to see um, somebody different and somebody who loves to show the story time. <clears throat> Just a highlight of our children's programs. Uh, we have a robot demo uh, with Harker Robotics. Uh, we have a year for, as Jennifer said, AI, AAPI month, um, year of the dragon story time. Um, we have a really fun one, a stuffy story time and sleepover um, where <clears throat> kids could bring their um, stuffed animal to the library on a Friday night and they leave their stuffed animals and the staff will take pictures of the stuffed animals um, doing fun things. That like, I'm, I'm going to bring my kids actually <laughs> and uh, they get to pick up their stuffies the next day. And get a picture. So it's, it's a fun. I remember doing this when I was a children's librarian. It's a, such a fun event. Um, I'm in our, our monthly Sunday afternoon on May 19 uh, for adults and teens. Again, for AACI Beginning Hula um, is this weekend. Uh, we have Poetry Community Hour, Board Game Sunday, and the monthly Now Read This Book Club. Um, statistics uh, for items checked out uh, went up 11% at Los Altos um, and 1% at Woodland. Items checked in went up 5.3% at Los Altos and 14.3% at Woodland. And um, really interesting, if you look at the gate count, um, it went up 26% um, year to year. So we're, you know, we're seeing a large increase in, in patrons, um, our story times, we have an increase in story times, which brings in a lot of people too. So we're happy to see patrons using the library. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> That's a thousand a day, FYI, in March. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, just some pictures. This is from our uh, Mandarin bilingual story time. Um, Jennifer Chang, the one doing it, she used to work at Los Altos, but she just got the, what is what is the official employee, Santa Clara County? Oh, yeah, she was uh, employee of the month. Yeah, for the, for the whole county. So um, we're, we're happy she does our Mandarin story time here. Um, she was trained by Jean, if you guys remember mm -hmm. Jean. Um, this is for one of our outreach events, um, a STEM outreach. 
And um, the next one is um, from uh, the egg, the Easter, um, the, not Easter, egg hunt in downtown. So that one was a, a very, it just says the ones down here in the, at the soccer field, a very well attended and very popular. So that's just some of the crafts they did. That's the city hosted event? Uh, soccer field here? No, this is the one downtown, the one but we were at the one here too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so. Uh, that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, I have a question. Is there in the, your you have a huge increase in your account? Is there a way that you are able to analyze how many of the, those people are are former patrons that are coming back, and how many are new, like maybe new to the area? Like are, um, not by who comes through the door. Um, there may be a way by like card usage, but yeah. I'd have to check. I, I don't know off the top of my head. We have a wonderful um, staff member who does our statistics, some statistics at Lynn, so I'll see, but I'm not, I'm not positive. I don't know. Because this just measures bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just the front gate or? Oh, okay. Oh, All three. Okay. okay. Yeah. okay. Has anybody ever come in and uh, found out? <laughs> they hope not. <laughs> Through the side door, the friend store. <laughs> if you come in and go out and come in again, do you get double counted or? I think so. Yeah. I mean, yes, we actually we actually value privacy, so actually we don't. Oh, to your point is, mm -hmm. yes, that would yeah. not be something we would note. Um, there is a report on new card holders per month and probably by location. So that would probably be, to Rose's point, mm -hmm. the way you would, mm -hmm. how many new card holders you added um, in, a, in a time period. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really interesting. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on the lolly. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Yeah, I had a question. Um, did you get a, uh, during the fire on El Camino, there was a Chinese library that got burned out, mm -hmm. private. Did you, mm -hmm. have you heard anything about that or uh, mm -hmm. they ever reach, I just, I'm no, just asking. No. I, I imagine they're okay now, but. Yeah, I haven't been contacted by anyone. No, yeah, there was a, pri a private Chinese library that would do uh, its own, you may know about it. Yeah, I can. Connect you guys with folks over there. I hadn't thought of the synergy between that those two until I spoke to her after the fire, but I don't know. I didn't know if that went anywhere. I think they're. I'm hoping they're okay. There were a number of uh, GoFundMe's for all the businesses that were involved. They did one. I'm assuming they were one of them. I created one. Are you getting any quite What kind of heat are you getting off on parking? Nothing right now. No. I think when people were asking for data, we were providing them with data and facts on the used library usage. They haven't had any inquiries lately. Great. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Did you move on? Uh, Commissioner reports. I have, I have a couple of reports. It's a rare time. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Los Altos uh, commissioner training is June 4th from 6 to 7.30, right behind this wall in the Grand Oak Room. Um, please attend if you're able. I'll send a reminder email. Um, I don't, I was asked by Commissioner Morris, um, if you're not able to attend, what happens? Please attend if you can. If you're going to happen to be on a plane at that time, we understand, so I'll double check. What the um, rules are around that, and then I did Please want to send it to me on this. Yes, you should have a calendar hold as well from the city clerk's yeah. office. I think the city clerk's office sent an email, but I'll send one as well. Yeah, I, I got something, but I need a reminder. I'll send a follow up, um, and then the other thing I did want to remind everyone: uh, we are in budget season, as I talked about, so. Um, the library is in our city budget for the library RFP uh, for improvements. Um, so we do have money allocated for that. And then we will be working on that process with the ad hoc subcommittee. And I anticipate at our next meeting, I'll have more information for you guys on uh, timelines and updates for that. So that's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. 
you have anything else to report? I was actually just going to check when our next meeting is. Yes, so yes. you have it on your right. Um, I believe it's August. So our next meeting is the first uh, Thursday of August. Mm -hmm. So um, it should already be on your calendar, but um, I'll send a reminder email. Don't worry with all the upcoming events. Um, but the next library commission meeting will be at that time. Um, so moving on to commissioner reports. Um, so, uh, I guess I get to report on Lally, but we have Freddie here to report on Lally. <laughs> the liaison. Yes, yes. So uh, Lolly had an event on Tuesday evening. It was our annual speaking volumes event. And we had a professor from Stanford who spoke on North Korea. And uh, I found him to be fascinating. I know Jennifer and Rose were there. Um, and Christine came for a little while, but had, uh, I think, book sale duties. Right? No, it was a cert meeting, actually. Oh, a cert meeting. That's right. That's right. Um, Anyway, that was a very successful event. It was by far the biggest attendance we've ever had. It, Cindy Hill counted and said she counted 233 people, which is amazing. And I hope didn't wasn't the guest part of that. <laughs> Maybe we will have that off the record. <laughs> um, the other uh, thing I want to report is just pro a progress report on the library courtyard. That, is, that courtyard project has was submitted to Nick Zorms, who's uh, now the assistant city manager. He was, uh, you know, he's in charge of everything that has anything to do with anything getting built in the city, is the way I like to put it. <laughs> so he has reviewed it, and he has met with our architects and had several um, suggestions. And then uh, he then he asked uh, the new um, Stephanie Williams, who's unfortunately I, can't, I don't know her exact title, but she would be like I think she's a deputy director of development services. And she was like she is the right hand person. So she has met with our architects, and so they are now doing the work that is necessary to resubmit with the, with all the suggestions completed to Nick and Stephanie. And then assuming that they are then happy with it, it will then go to planning commission. So I believe we are looking at um, probably a month and a half to two months. Uh, but then it would have to get on the planning committee calendar from the whole when that will be, but I'm sure uh, that as we get closer to that, well, actually, since they're not, you're not meeting in the summer, maybe by August I'll have a report for you on if it's in planning commission or when it will be in planning commission. Uh, any questions on that? No comment, no questions. Not from me. And the uh, final time of the current goal for completion? It's still, it's still uh, the end of 2025. That's the last quarter of 2025. Um, there was a lot, it was an interesting um, uh, Request there was a lot of construction when they when our architects considered construction documents that they wanted in this design review. So it just meant that these documents were going to have to be done, uh, but they just need to be done sooner than they thought they needed to be done. So they're just going to get them done, and and then that will be part of the submission, the planning. And it's still and definitely the case that there is no disturbance to the boundary of the orchard or the tree placement. When, when we talk about boundary of the orchard, um, Nick and Gabe will tell you that there is no boundary of the orchard. I, it will not, uh, there will be no loss of trees. 
or relocation of tree sites? No, no. All the tree sites and even the irrigation boxes are staying where they are. None of them are being touched. And if you look at the original sidewalk, that's that's staying. So. so everyone should be happy. Well, that's never the case. <laughs> Are there any more questions, comments? Um, uh, did Commissioner Bedard, did you want to report on friends? Yes. Uh, well, tomorrow is a big sale starts, uh, the, right? Yeah. And then it's all kicking up. Are you going to make a report? Oh, uh, we haven't had a meeting. Okay. We've been hauling books. We've been sorting books, and they'll be put out <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all indications, all trends on the French sales have been very up, uh, especially Amazon. Uh, if you look at the way Friends is organized, it's an automaton in terms of how they do business. So they, as you know. Um, so, uh, I don't know, Christine, I mean, we haven't had a, there hasn't been a director's meeting, I don't think. There was a board meeting uh, within the last meeting. month, I Has think. There yeah, there was. Oh. Um, the one thing I recall, um, I did go to that meeting, but um, uh, friends recently had a couple of donations of, um, I think there were two big donations of Asian books from um, professors of Asian it's literature. Um, yeah, um, and a lot of them are you know, for anyone interested in Asian studies, they're quite possibly valuable, rare. So you may look out for some of the sale. They may, I don't know if they're going to be in the vintage section or um, some of them are ongoing. Um, um, so that was quite exciting. Something to look out for. Are you um, working tomorrow? Tomorrow morning and evening. Huh. I didn't remember saying that. Um, and I think that's it from the friends. I mean, it's steady. It seems to be going very well. They're, uh, they've heard on Duncan worked with uh, the city on parking, seem to be fairly happy. Um, they know that the shed's going to have to move at some point, but it's okay. Um, yeah. And I believe we have filled all of the board and committee positions for the Good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that was some <laughs> difficulty in some of them. Um, any questions on friends? Um, Julie isn't here, so um, Cindy did email me about NCLA basically to say that there wasn't anything much to report. They are meeting on Monday. Uh, no, she said to me. When the agenda came out, she would highlight anything that might be of interest to the commission, but I haven't received an email from her since then. So that's really all I can say about NCLA. Does anyone else have any information from NCLA? I'll probably do that. Yeah. Got nothing more there. Um, any other commissioner reports? Two things for me. Go to the website, library.bedard.com. Um, there was a lot of talk about history. So what we did is we got Marion Abel's history of Los Altos Library 1914 to 1964, and put it up on PDF and made it available online. And uh, just scroll down a little. Scroll down, Mary Enables History of the Los Altos Library. Click on that. Scroll down, you've got the whole PDF down there. 71 glorious pages of Los Altos history, which will put anything that the bloody Los Altos History Museum can put together to shame. <laughs> the same things that were happening back in those days are happening now, the same incalcitrant um city council the same lack you know lackluster city staff and even the same peccadilloes of the librarians 
are all documented in this. <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I made this available. So go back to the main page, and then I'll, I'll show you. I finally finished another article. This is all available on Library. But go up to the top. O'Reilly for Libraries. I finally finished an article on O'Reilly for Libraries, which I've been promising Rose forever. So I wrote a little snippet on O'Reilly for Libraries, how it works, how you get in, how it's the geek gold standard. Go down, go down. You're going to hit a big red button. Hit the button. Uh, free library card. Anyway. So those are the two sort of independent projects I've been doing. For the record, I've always kept everything we've done uh, that's interesting up on this website for people to refer to as, as they need to, like the RFPs and things of that nature. And the pictures are so cool. I mean, look look at Jesse. Look, look at that. That's her password picture from like 1923. <laughs> she was probably going off to some big party in Berlin. <laughs> anyway. Or Jesse didn't know one day the internet would be a thing. Yeah, <laughs> would be a thing. But anyway, um, I really think, you know, we talk about marketing, we talk about history, and through our library, I mean, the two melt together. There's, they're not um, independent. The orchard and the library are very much two and one of the same, and I think positioning them that way might be uh, a good way at least to really, if you need to rally support to do something. Oh, and plus I sent uh, a, uh, it's not up on here, but I sent a picture of uh, Jesse Landis with a barcode that goes to the site that we're, we put up in the friends booth that I know Rose is going to put up by the, in the library mm -hmm. so people can uh, use a QR code and get to it. And that's it. Thank you. Is there any, there any other commissioner reports? No. Okay, um, so moving on, are there any potential future agenda items? Before, hold on just a second before answering that, at least for me, if anybody else has some. Um, we're going to have to do something, some update from the uh, subcommittee, uh, the uh, remodel subcommittee, I would imagine, in August mm -hmm. as an, as mm -hmm. an item. Mm -hmm. And maybe a checkpoint for your project, right? I mean, do you think we can start testing? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do any report on the outreach at all by that time? Might, might be too late. Would, yeah, we will. We have a lot of outreach in May. So okay, I, will, I definitely will. Okay. Work. So that might be one thing. Just remember that we will, I'll be able to work with the chair on items such as the library improvements ad hoc subcommittee would definitely already be on here. I'm envisioning the night at the library mm -hmm. will be an item and we can always mm -hmm. have any information that the county wants mm -hmm. to share. Okay. So these are typically just more specific things that or new topics that we haven't discussed as a commission yet. Okay, so any other comments? Did we want to talk about like the visibility of the commissioners? And we talked about it last time saying we wanted to bring ideas together, right? Like we all bring ideas. I'm not sure if we want to talk about it. Now or add it? Oh, no, not today. today. Yeah, Maybe no. next time. Yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. add it to the agenda, sure. So commission commission visibility. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the night at the library was about visibility. Yes, I think it's only one night, one thing. Yeah, that's one so. thing, yeah. But I think we talked about like um potentially pictures or oh, something. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um and then also maybe like on the Instagram account or your newsletter or something, maybe share the work that we do or you know. I'm not sure about I'm just saying. <laughs> what Instagram? You're gonna use Instagram, my God. Jumping <laughs> on <No. laughs>
Yeah, for example, like when you do the remodeling project or something, you know, like we bring it up in the Instagram post and say. Oh no, I was talking like, more the the just the idea of reaching a demo, a, you know, a younger <laughs> demographic. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Something on your website. On yes, on your website. Yeah. It stays mm -hmm. up, sure. Like the Lally Lally website has um, items on all the board members, does it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, I won't do that. Oh, my, no, that yeah. would have no. <laughs> Yet you'll have a picture of someone from the 1920s up there. <laughs> <laughs> so commission visibility with is the future agenda topic? Uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Brainstorm. Brainstorm, yeah. Exactly. Yes. But you know what? I there was another item that I wanted to ask the staff about. And that was the message we got from the city clerk about social media, which I could not mm -hmm. decipher whatsoever what the hell the message was about or what. I mean, maybe you could just take that as feedback. I, I just didn't know what was going on. So I, I think I know the message you're referring to. And I'll say keep tuned because I think on June 4th that will be an item that's the okay, case. Cool. So, uh, like it. it's another plug, commissioner training, June 4th. They're gonna the city clerk's office is gonna go over everything you need to know as a commissioner. And one of the topics will be um how to um use social media and use a platform that's um aware of your role or perceived role within the community, uh, depending on how you post anyone. Because that was a weird memo. That was weird. It was not a normal memo. I did not understand that memo. June 4th. <laughs> I'll be able to break it down a little bit more. All right. Anything else before? Good now or meeting is done. <laughs> 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 <laughs>